Today we are reacting to Mark Roba. Uh, this piano speaks English, and it's and gonna be interesting to see. Can it speak English, or is it just a clickbaited video? I'm just joking. Uh, if you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, share, and if you want more Mark Roba videos, let me know in the comments. This is a talking piano, and it's ah. so cool. <laughs> Is this a talking piano? And his name is Chopsticks. Okay. So in addition to talking, he can play simple songs like that, but also like really complicated songs. I feel like that's just like one of those in the malls. Like I've seen those in like malls where they just play on their own. They are already programmed. So I feel like it's not that hard. And sing for us. Okay, never mind. Not yet, Chopsticks. Remember, for my videos, that song usually comes a little bit later. At the end, I've watched one of his like, I like like two of his vi vi ones. Anyways, <laughs> it's pretty cool. He's gonna attempt to play the world's most two of his videos, Mark Robbins. From Sheet Music Boss, Not really. E. The heck it is is this is this even music? Is this even music? Been played with an actual real life piano, so I've legitimately got a couple fire extinguishers on hand in case the whole thing goes up in flames. This is flames? You gonna kill him? You can actually, you can actually hear. How is this possible? Before we get to any of that, we need to first understand the really cool engineering behind how pianos even work. Because if you look at the guts of this modified see-through piano, for something that was invented by an Italian dude 300 years ago, <laughs> some Italian dude. Complicated. In fact, if Love. you zoom in and just oh, isolate on a single key, this is what's happening every time you push down on the white part. Now, if you're thinking like an engineer, you know the best design is always the one that gets the job done in the most simple way possible. And when I first saw this, no offense to Bartolome Cristofori, the inventor of the piano, it just seemed overly complicated. I mean, yeah, I used to have a like a like a, that kind of like exactly like that kind of piano, except not like talking one and not like that complicated. But it like I literally used to open it up and like see all all like all it was. It was very cool, honestly. The first piano I ever played was pretty dang simple. Like, why can't you just have a class one lever where when I push down here, there's a fulcrum in the middle and it hits the string here. Well, it turns out there's two problems with that right off the bat. The first is that the hammer remains in contact with the string when you hold the key down. That means the string isn't free to wiggle and vibrate, which is how the sound is created. Like with this guitar, it sounds great until you touch the strings. And now because it can't vibrate, you don't hear anything. In fact, you can see that's exactly the problem with this toy piano. The second mm -hmm. problem is this is an upright piano, so the strings must be vertical to fit. But that's an easy enough fix if we shift them here and add an extra hinge point. However, you'll notice we're still damping the string. And as you can see, the piano should continue making sound even if I'm holding the key down. So how do we do that? Well, Bartolomeo right, Why don't we pleasure. see it? So it's back. a little extra hardware here. So now when you press the key, this jack flings the hammer So forward, some Italian dude is more smarter than uh, Mark Rover. <laughs> which moves it out of the way <laughs> sure. so the hammer can move back and not dampen the string. Fun fact, most people think pianos are considered string instruments. But this hammer-like action is why they're actually classified as percussion. More you know. So now if I press the key down, it will continue to make noise. But wait, if I let my finger go, the sound should stop. So something is damping that string. But if you look at our current build, you can see if I let the key go, there's nothing to stop the string from just continuing to vibrate and make sound. To solve this, Bartolomeo added an extra pivot point and some more hardware. So now you see this damper rests on the string. And okay, so now we get to the uncut. Then the hammer strikes. Then the the very complex way of the uh, pianos. Up to the moment, so the very interesting. And finally, if I want to play a note really quickly and repeatedly like this, I need the hammer to be close to the string and not way back here like this. So by adding this backstop, it keeps the hammer close after each hit in case I need to quickly hit it again. So there you have okay. it. Apologies to my fellow engineer Bartolomeo. It turns out it's He's all right all, all along. Be, and no more. It's also sort of simplistically beautiful that all that functionality is from only one input. 
every time you press a single key. Now, no wonder they cost like a thousand dollars. But because he can play himself, and it is I don't know how much, but play a lot. Pianos have been around for over a hundred years, but there's an important difference here. An old player piano works by scrolling through a paper sheet like this, and when it encounters a hole, it passes air through, which plays the key. So all um, the keys are played at full force, and the timing isn't very precise. Whereas chopsticks here is a modern version that uses a solenoid to actuate the key. We place the solenoids right here, so um, when the rod extends, it's no different than someone actually pressing the key. You can see them all lined up along here. But with solenoids, not only do you get your timing down to fractions of a second, but you have 127 different levels of increasing force. This is too complicated for me. Which means you can make perfect recreations of a human player. So here's my friend Andrew from the YouTube channel Sheet Music Boss playing a simple C shanty and then recording it as a MIDI, and then Chopsticks uses as that a MIDI, MIDI to play it back perfectly. Only since he's not limited to a mere 10 human fingers, the songs can get more complicated. Nah, that looks more than 10 fingers. Because those 88 precision solenoids allow him to make crude reproductions of entire bands. See if you can pick out the singer's actual voice in this classical piece of oh, music. Classical, I hate classical. Oh. He rickrolled us. Did you get rickrolled as I did? I think you did. And so now that we know at least partially what he's capable of, before we attempt Rushy, let's quickly discuss how we actually make Chopsticks speak and sing. <clears throat> Chopsticks. That's better. And to do that, I'm going to oh, press the okay, so that's Graham how it from is. the YouTube channel 3 Blue One Brown for a simple explanation. The signals from speech can be visualized with a waveform. Which you might think yes, I know that, that you got you kept me. Of time. I'm with you so if far. If you zoom in on a little window of it, you might notice it looks like a rhythmic repeating pattern. As it happens, one of the most delightful facts from math tells us that for pretty much any signal, you can express it as a sum of pure sine waves, which in the context of sounds correspond to pure pitches, higher frequency sine waves giving you higher pitches. If you want to perfectly reconstruct the original signal, this often requires adding a very large number of pure sine waves, each with a different height. Now a favorite tool in signal processing is something called a Fourier transform, which you can think of as telling you the heights of each one of these sine waves as a function of the frequency you're dealing with. So for our piano project, if you take right. this Fourier transform and you just consider the peaks, it's a way of giving you the most important notes to be played to recreate the sound. If you add just a handful of these dominant frequencies, you'll get a signal which is almost, but not quite, the original signal. And if it, we do it totally got me. You know, totally understand everything. Signal, it's a way of or... telling us what notes should be played at what time and with what level of intensity. And if you do it right, you can get something that sounds like this. Hey, Chopsticks! Uh, I yeah, understood this a lot of it. Okay. Basically. Now I do have Let's to come it. clean and admit that I am cheating a little bit by putting the words Chopsticks is speaking up on the screen. As humans, 80% of the information our brains gather about our surroundings comes from our sense of sight. And so as our dominant sense, our brain really leans on our eyes even when processing what we hear. If you don't believe me, here's two tests you can do right now. Number one, go back and rewatch any part of this video where Chopsticks is speaking. Only this time, close your eyes and see how much harder it is to understand Let's see. and number two oh, maybe yeah. you've heard this audio clip from some random 80s toy saying the word green needle now compare that to this other clip that says brainstorm only as you might have guessed those are the exact uh, same audio clip which is bonkers because those two words don't even have the same number of syllables for proof i'll repeat it twice more only this time you can randomly pick a word to they didn't even sound like brainstorm I have brain. So I know I had the brain, but I didn't have anything. This is crazy. I present an actual piano attempting to play the world's hardest piano song, Rush E. Of course. I yep. Yeah, I I think he's lying. He tricked me because I closed my eyes for that entire thing, and I did not 
hear or uh, understand anything. Okay, now that I'm looking at it, I can I it's I can understand it. Easy. Good luck. If anyone, if any human could play this, they're the master of it. Rush. You rush. That's so. Uh, that's amazing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do that again. Da -da -da -da. Uh, he, he, he failed. Delay. Research. What the heck is going um smoke a lot of smoke what the heck <laughs> for me also you know maybe okay making a YouTube video to try and teach you something is that it's just not very interactive which is why I'm pleased to say my friends at brilliant.org who just so happen to be supporting this video have solved this issue and if you don't know brilliant is a problem-solving website now okay. over if you want to be smart <laughs> math science and computer science but their real special sauce is all about making the content interactive which is way more effective at building your intuition my favorite one so far is their scientific thinking course where instead of memorizing specific formulas that interactivity builds intuition about general principles you see in the everyday cool. world around you and it works great on both desktop and mobile so instead of picking up your phone and mindlessly scrolling a news feed that leaves you feeling sad with brilliant you get this addictive experience which leaves you feeling stoked by unlocking the hidden principles that govern our amazing world so if you want to grow your brain and support my channel at the same time go to brilliant.org slash mark rover or use the link in the video description to sign up for free because the first 2,000 people get 20 percent off their annual membership so thanks to brilliant for making learning fun thanks to chopsticks for not catching fire and burning my place down and of course thanks to you for watching I was okay doing it again interesting hey right, i hope you liked that be sure to hit that like button subscribe share and if you want more uh mark robo let me know in the comments have a good day